Right, and we are live. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Bureau of Investigation demo case. I'm joined by Rick this evening. Say hello, Rick. Hello. Let us know if you're watching this live, if you can see me, see Rick, hear me, hear Rick. Let us know if all of those things are working. What is Bureau of Investigation? This is the next box set in the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective series. Space Cowboys have released four boxes of games so far. Um, and although this isn't technically officially a Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective game, it, it kind of is. Um, the top of the box says that it's very similar to Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. But Sherlock Holmes isn't in it. Um, this is Bureau of Investigation. So this is a rethemed version of the game. This is set in 1920s. It has a Arkham Horror uh, Cthulhu style theme. But the rules of the game are different as well, Rick. Mm. Now, we've Sorry. both played lots of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. And yep. we've also both played lots of Arkham Horror themed games. Mm -hmm. So this is this should be right or past right. This should be. Yes, should be perfect. Be. Yeah. So do you want to tell us, um, we'll, we'll basically, we're going to share the uh, share the roles tonight, me and Rick. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to just tell us one thing that's different about these cases than the Sherlock Holmes cases? Well, from what I've told from reading, reading the thing, it seems to be you can only go to a max amount of places before you have to go on to the, to the end section. Um, yeah. And you can interview people or investigate. Uh, and or either or and then they both cost a lead so yeah. you go to each place in two different ways but it still costs you a lead each way yeah so, so in, in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective which you don't need to have played before you play this you can go to as many leads as you want to but every lead you go to over a certain amount loses you points in this game, you are basically limited, as Rick says, on how many you can go to. And in this demo scenario, we can only go to 10 leads. So we're probably only going to be about 45 minutes to an hour, I think, for this demo case, mm -hmm. I, I guess. We can only go to 10 places. We don't lose any points for going, we don't gain points for going to fewer than 10 places. So 10 leads is what we can follow up, but we are not allowed to go any more than that. Um, and then also, yeah, as Rick says, each lead you could actually choose to either interview them or investigate them um, and you will get different results depending on which one you do and you can choose to do both but that costs two leads the other big change is in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective um, you actually once you've decided that you've finished investigating you turn to the back of the book and you get a series of questions you answer those questions to the best of your ability then you read the solution and you will gain points based on how many of those questions you you get right. It's done differently in this one, isn't it, Rick? Yeah. So it's you either I think you either win or lose kind of thing, is it? At the I end, I think I think there is points, but right. what you have to do when we've done the ten leads, we have to choose one location which we want to oh, neutralise. Now, mm -hmm. in the actual box set. Um, I believe that you choose three, three leads. leads and you will mm -hmm. get points based on whether you get them right. Now, the last page of this PDF that we've been sent is on the reverse side of this. Okay, We're not going to look at this till the end, but basically we've got to work out which, lead, which place we want to neutralize and then we will look at it on the last page. If, if, the, page that we if the location we choose is not on there, we've lost. Uh, if it is on there, we will gain success depending on how good it was right. i think that's basically it and looking uh, at this little picture here it's got lots of um the, i take it the full game has a lot bunch of little leaflets and envelopes and all that yes. kind of stuff as well yeah. as newspapers and you also get a map i guess of, of arkham in the area yeah. like so you, you get might London. be able to see it here just about but yeah the full game this is just a demo scenario mm -hmm. but you get two maps you get a map of arkham um you get a map of Massachusetts, I think, as well. You get a big directory, you get some newspapers, you get all sorts of extra stuff. It isn't just a whole bunch of PDFs that you get in the game. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more because we, we can go in a bit zoom more. Uh, Haggis is joining me tonight. Haggis is one of my faithful companions that's been with me for about 30 years. So if we get stuck, we are going to consult Haggis and see if Haggis has got any uh, any solutions for it's us. like you ripped the head off of a teddy. <laughs> no, it's my wild hairy haggis. Okay, so let's start reading. Welcome to the Bureau of Investigation Agents. Here are five very peculiar cases that will put your investigative talent and courage to the test. Bureau of Investigation, Investigations in Arkham and elsewhere is based on the rules for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective and offers innovative options and tweaks. You don't need to have played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective to enjoy this game. 
as a team follow the leads, interview witnesses, examine documents and reveal the threats looming over mankind. Now the reference there to five very peculiar cases, that's because the actual box set comes with five cases in it. We're just going to be doing one case here and the demo case here is, as it says, a shorter and simpler version. So you're not just going to get, if you, if you get the game, you're not just going to get five cases like this, you're going to get five cases that will take you a lot longer um, than this. Right, Rick, do you want to read the introduction for us? Okay, so the US Department of Justice, the Bureau of Investigation, April the 5th, 1929, Arkham West Police Station. It's 6 a.m. on a rainy Friday morning, and as officers of the Arkham City Police Department, that means your shift starts now. You don't expect anything exciting from the day ahead. You find the same old piles of paperwork on your desks, and body odors still flow from the drunk tank. Before too long, Chief Burt calls you into his office, hoping that a new case will put some distance. Between you and your paperwork, you hurry to the meeting. Professor Bernard Shaw of Miskatonic University came to see me last night. He wanted to report the disappearance of a diligent student of his, Albert Cooper. He's been missing for the past three weeks. The professor stopped by Mrs. Charlene's boarding house, where Albert rents a room, but he wasn't there. I forget, figure he's probably shacked up with some broad somewhere, but still, I promised him we'd look into it. And by we, I mean you. You have until tonight to find this guy. Got it? You can read ten leads before turning to the intervention section. You wonder if it would be helpful to visit the Central Police Station or the morgue. So okay. I'll take We've those got, four bold things. As four different I guess so. So in, in the full game, you've got the map, you've got the directory, you can choose lots of places to go. But it looks like we've got four places we can go. Miskatonic University, which is 1300. Uh, Mrs. Charlene's boarding house, 1900. The Central Police Station, 1400. Or the morgue, 1200. And for each one of them, we can choose to in interview them or investigate them. Although I don't think we'll get much luck with interviewing the morgue. I think that might not work. <laughs> no, unless well, unless that actually means go and talk to the mortuary assistant who might give us information. It could be. It could but, be. Yeah, not sure. Right. So where do you think we should go first? <laughs> hmm. So I mean, should we missing. go and speak to Bernard Shaw himself? Well, is he going to tell the only what he's just told the boss? Exactly. That's what. So we have Albert to Cooper things. has been missing for three weeks. The professor stopped by Mrs. Charlene's boarding house where Albert rents a room, but he wasn't there. He wasn't there. Maybe we should go to Mrs. Charlene's boarding house ourselves. Well, the bottom line says you wonder if it would be helpful to visit the Central Police Station or the morgue. Nah. It tells us it tells us <laughs> to do that. <laughs> we could. Mm. Well, I fancy going to Mrs. Charlene's boarding house. That would be that would be my first thought. Or well, if we can get into his room. We might be able to find some evidence of where he's gone. Okay, so you think in Central Police Station first? Uh, no, into Mrs. Charlene's boarding house and into where Albert rents a room, see if we can get into his room. Okay, okay, so we'll go there first. Now, interview or investigate? I, I think investigate. Yeah, you try to obtain yeah. information in a roundabout way. Yeah, so me and Rick have never played this demo case and we've not played any of the cases in the main game, so we are a little bit, um, yeah, flying by the seat of our pants. So, Mrs. Charlene's boarding house, 1900. Now, in the book, these are divided into, I believe there is in order. So, right, so we've got interviews first. And then we've got, I'm trying not to look at things we shouldn't be able oh, to yeah. see. It says at the top, doesn't it? Top of the sheets of paper. And then investigating is this, I think. The black, black box. Have I printed these out right? Okay, so investigating, we are investigating... 1900 which is there okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover up the stuff we shouldn't see uh, and so i will read i will read this right 1900 let me write a note of that you're going to make a note right mrs charlene's boarding house is a three-story building whose windows like eyes give it an inquisitive look it is located in a quiet area of arkham some 300 yards from the university an ideal boarding house for students looking for a roof cooked food and some peace and quiet for a modest sum of money. You decide to ferret out, to decide to ferret about the ground floor in the absence of its owner. The living room is plain, only adorned with a carpet in red tones and, on the mantel, a photograph of a young couple, a soldier and a nurse. Mrs. Charlene's room is most ordinary. The garden is tiny and well maintained. The kitchen is full of food and utensils. A chopper placed next to two beautiful chickens draws your eyes to the table. Further away, you notice a large combination lock affixed to a door that probably leads to a pantry. 
Everything is perfectly maintained and cleaned with care, except perhaps the underside of the kitchen furniture, which conceals traces of dirt. Is that everything? That is everything. So. So what have we learned? Not a lot. A photograph of a young couple, a soldier and a nurse. I was hoping we'd get into his room, but it looks like it's... Or well, is this the room? It looks like it's Mrs. Charlene's room. Oh yeah, Mrs. Charlene's room is most ordinary. We've gone yeah. to her room. Why, why have we gone into her <laughs> There's a room. helicopter placed next to two beautiful chickens, which is, which is interesting as well. So, the professor stopped by Mrs. Charlene's boarding house where Albert rents a room, but he wasn't there. So Albert is renting a room here. We were hoping to get into Albert's room, weren't we? We were. But as it is, all we've done is we've got into Mrs. Charlene's room. Where we found out that she's possibly seeing a soldier? Yeah. Assuming that she's a nurse. She's, she's a nurse. No, I don't know. Then maybe it's her parents. Could be. Hmm. Could be. Anyway, that's one of ten places that we've been to. If anybody watching this in the chat has any suggestions about where we should go, feel free to let us know. But that that is one of them done. Yeah, one of the rooms is, was padlocked up, which is possibly a pantry, which seems a bit extreme, but okay. Why would a pantry be padlocked? Mm. Yeah, there's nothing else on this page for us to see. So. If she wasn't there, wasn't she? So if she wasn't there, we probably don't want to in interview either. True. Unless there is no point. Yeah, there's no point interviewing this location, as you say, if, if nobody is here. Uh, the PDF demo case is available at this address. Ah, right. So Space Cowboys are posting a URL into the chat, which I think I have to approve. <laughs> um, yeah, if you can post the URL, it might um, it might not allow it because YouTube will stop you posting it. But I can I can approve it if we need to. Um, yeah yeah okay yeah hmm. i can't post the link but i'll tell you what I'll, I'll put it in the description of this video um if if somebody from space cowboys wants to email me now um i will copy the link and post it into youtube because yeah it won't allow you to put um to put urls in there right okay jonathan saying we should go to the morgue we could go to the morgue I mean, if we find the body, why? yeah, well, he's been missing three weeks. Long time. It is a long time. It is a long time. Central police station. I'm thinking possibly next. Um, I'm, I'm, I was a bit confused. Cause I thought that's where we were. Oh no, so we were at Arkham West Police Station. Yeah. And that we want to go to the Central Police Station because that's near where he lives. I think so. I guess. Or we go to the university, the Miskatonic University. Mm -hmm. Although we've had a few people in the chat now saying interview the morgue, so we could go do that. We could listen to the chat. Shall, nice we, shall we go and interview the morgue? Let's see. Let's see what happens if we interview the morgue. So yeah. the morgue is twelve hundred. Uh, interviews are in the the first section. Oh, it's the first. It's literally our and first. It is, the, bit. it is the first one. So I'm going to cover cover this up. Do you want to read this? Yeah. You realise that your mission will be a bit more complicated than anticipated when the morgue supervisor responds to your question in the negative. No, I haven't received a corpse matching your description in months. Besides, I must admit that lately it has been very calm. The only body that I received last night was this worker that was crushed by a girder. Look at this thick, dirty black nails. I've never seen anything like that before. This city never ceases to amaze me. Right. Dirty so, black nails, dirty floor underneath things. Mm. Look at his thick, dirty black nails. <laughs> so there's a worker that has been crushed by a girder. Might be related, might not be related. I mean, we're, we're already a fifth of the way in. Right. I have a link <laughs> which Space Cowboys have sent me, and I'm just going to put that in the chat now. So, yeah, this is a demo scenario. If you like what you're seeing and you actually want to play through this yourself, you can. There you go. I've put the link in, in the chat. Um, yeah, switch off now and go and play it yourself if you want to, or stick with us and see how we get on. Mm. That's two places we've been to. Mm. We can only go to eight more. I'm assuming we're going to find new places to I go assume to. we will, because there are more places in here. <laughs> than just four. Yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I think some of them will lead to others. I hope so. Okay. 
So, Central Police Station? Yeah, it's, yeah. Are we interviewing or are we investigating? Hmm. So, interviewing Contact is the contacting there. the individuals and investigating mm. is finding out more about it in a roundabout way. I think we probably just want us to go and speak to them. I guess so. Okay. So, Central Police Station, interview. 1400. 1400. Yeah. Off we go. Right. Uh, Max Senrif, Senrik, a field staff sergeant, receives you in his office. He does not look down on you, and you appreciate that. You worked together several years ago and got along well. He offers to tip you off about Mrs. Charlene's boarding house. We've dealt with two kids from there before. One of the Raxons, Gerald, I believe. We caught him pissing on a patrol car. He was drunk. He had a half-empty bottle of whiskey on him, but we led him off with a warning. When he's sober, he's a nice guy. There's also Emily Sundeer, a rebel, she's a rebel too. She's into politics, a suffragette, as they say, but I've never heard of Albert. It says Copper here. Is it Copper or Cooper? Might be a typo. No, it's Copper, Albert Copper. Um, then he adds in a low voice, but how many of you are investigating this case? I must confess that I met with a private eye. He was with the police 10 years ago, so we exchanged tips from time to time. He's a tall redhead with an improbable face. He also wanted information about the boarding house. Then there were two guys from Boston, military types. They told me they were from the interrogation office or something. Feds, I think. They were clearly looking for information about Albert. And now you. Can't be a coincidence. Okay. So, there's lots of people wanting to find Albert Copper. Tall redhead I, with an improbable face. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't quite know what an improbable face means. Um, the first bit, <laughs> where it was true. talking about the Raxons, I, that, that sounds like it might just be flavour. Yeah. Rather he's than actually people, relevant. But he's never heard of an Albert Copper. He's dealt with people who've stayed in that boarding house before, but not Albert Copper. He's never heard of him. Right, okay. Um, but then a couple of people, a whole, a whole bunch of people have been asking about it. So there's this private eye and that was with four. the police 10 years ago who's a tall guy with, with red hair. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's two two guys from Boston that military. says military types said they were from the investigation office. He thinks they're feds, but might not be. So there's lots of people looking into looking into this. I'm to find out, but... Well, that's three places we've been to. <laughs> <laughs> We've got nowhere so far. Oh, we're going to have to go to the university, aren't we? <clears throat> we are going to have to go to the university. Right, what are we going to do? Are we inv are we interviewing or are we investigating? It's a bit of an awkward choice, isn't it? Because you're going to use up a lead and you just don't know which one's going to be the correct one to do. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> well, we've so far, we've investigated, interviewed, interviewed. So should we investigate? <laughs> Yeah, let's investigate the university. So we're going to go to the he university and we're going to investigate it. So this he is works a... there, doesn't he? He's a student. He's a yeah. student at the university. Yeah. So this is, do you want to read this? This is 1300 and this is investigating, investigating rather than interviewing. Today. I'm just going to, yeah. I, should have, I should have stapled these together. So this is 1300 at the yeah. back of the book. Got it. Top of page six, yeah. You spend a good while watching the comings and goings in the university surroundings and quickly realise that given the number of students on the premises, it would be challenging to recognise anyone. However, thanks to Bert's description of Professor Bradshaw, you manage to spot him in the middle of a crowd of students before too long. You follow him, at first with your eyes, then on foot as he heads down a small alley that borders a walled park. There he meets a suspicious-looking red-headed man. Bradshaw hands him a brown envelope. The two men quickly separate before going about their business. Okay, we still can't go anywhere else. <laughs> okay, it says you can do both if you pay for both, yeah. Yeah. But you can always go back, I suppose, and do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was that was what? That was investigating. That was. So, so but the red-headed man we know is... We the, know he's a private investigator, but who's Professor Bradshaw? He's the guy who asked us to, to find him. He is, isn't he? Yeah. He, want, he reported the disappearance of the student... So he's hired somebody else. Are you else? sure? Hired... I mean, yeah, it might it might be an error in the demo scenario, but it was a Professor Bernard Shaw. Oh, who are we saying then? 
Yeah, it was a Professor Bernard Shaw that came to see. Oh, and it says Bradshaw. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, it, it may it may be an error. Um, if Space Cowboys can let let me know if that is an error or not. But at the start, it says it's Professor Bernard Shaw that came to see. Um, who did he come to see? Bert. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the Captain whereas Chief... in here it's Professor Bradshaw. As in all one word. So I, I'm suspecting it is a slight error. I'll wait for confirmation from that. But so, what's going on here then? Let's think so about this. If we're thinking that's the same person, then he yeah. must have hired a private eye to either look for Albert as well. So he's as got well as us looking for him potentially. Right. Okay. <laughs> or but there's the he's... fact that he's given him. So we're, we're there right now, and Bradshaw is giving him a brown envelope. Yeah. Is there something that Bradshaw knows that, that we don't? Oh, he's got hmm. extra extra information or photos or something he's given him? No, no, Could no, be. No. Okay, it is a typo, so they, they are the same person. Right, okay. Excellent. So that's probably Bernard Bradshaw. That's probably it. Okay. Yeah. So we've 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 investigated the university. We haven't interviewed people at the university. We've investigated the boarding house, but we haven't interviewed. Mm -hmm. We have interviewed the central police station, but we haven't investigated. Yeah. And we interviewed the morgue. Yes, we did interview the yeah. morgue. Interview the morgue. Okay. So. So so so. <laughs> so well. Here's the thing. In a number of Sherlock Holmes consulting detective cases, the person who comes to give you the job is quite often in on it in some mm. way or are mm. a little bit of a suspicious. So I'm, I'm starting to think that this Professor Bradshaw yeah. might have an ulterior motive for finding Albert Copper <laughs> or it might be a complete wild goose chase. There might, there might not be an Albert Copper. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. hmm. And I'm not quite sure. So at the end, once we've been to 10 leads, uh, we choose one location and read the corresponding entry in the intervention section. So we have to intervene somewhere at the end. Um, I don't know what it is that we're doing. I don't know whether that's the location where we think he's being kept at or something like that. But hopefully it will become clear. Yeah, we'll try and work something out, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> David in the chat agrees with us, thinks that the professor is hiding something. Hmm. Right, where well, next? We investigated that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, could... we could interview the university and speak to yeah, people. maybe speak to him. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so front of the book... 1300 is here. Right. Okay. Professor Bradshaw welcomes you into his office. I can't imagine Albert giving up on his studies. On the contrary, he is one of my most diligent and brilliant students. You ask him if there were any warning signs as to his disappearance. No, absolutely nothing. Admittedly, he'd been tired for weeks probably because of the personal work I require from my students. I think I am strict, but fair. In any case, his disappearance is of great concern to me. That's That's it. Work. That sounds dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, we're still not brilliant getting brilliant any further. Brilliant student. So there's actually eight leads you can go to at the very start, and we've been to five of them? That Six? was interviewing the university. We're halfway. Five. <laughs> We've been to five. But none of those five has led us anywhere else. Are we just bad luck in this? Or bad deductioning? I don't know. What, what did we do at the police station? Did we interview? We uh, did, police didn't we? station, which is 1,400, we interviewed, yes. But we've no reason to investigate the police station, have we? Unless there's evidence or something, or he's in the cells. <laughs> mm. So 
So what about interviewing at Mrs. Charlene's boarding house? He's not there, though, as far as we no. know. But some, another roommate might be. You might know about him. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm a bit of a loss as to <laughs> as to where we can go next. Because although I haven't really looked at this PDF much, I'm aware that there are lots of numbered sections in there. <laughs> so no, we're, we're end with zero. <laughs> yeah, one of them that we go to is bound to open up other stuff. Yeah, let's go. Let's go interview Charlene's boarding house. Why not? Okay. So Charlene's boarding house, nineteen hundred, and we are oh, we interviewing. Have you found something? It's a big one. With oh, other okay. Bold. I'm just getting the right piece. Here we go, nineteen hundred. Okay. Got it. Mrs. Charlene's boarding house is a three-story building whose windows, like eyes, give it an inquisitive look. It's located in a quiet area of Arkham, some three hundred yards from the university. An ideal boarding house for students looking for a roof, cooked food, and some peace and quiet for a modest sum of money. Sounds familiar. We've That's been here one. before. <laughs> yeah. You have to knock several times on the door before some small woman opens the door suspiciously. Then, dazzled by your gleaming uniforms, she lowers her guard and ushers you into a living room which adjoins a kitchen smelling of herbs and stew. Quickly, you realise that Mrs. Charlene speaks little. Makes you repeat twice everything you ask her. She's in. Okay. <coughs> oh, you know, my students, they're a bit like the children I never had. Well, yes, my husband died on the front in 1918. I was a nurse there in France. Uh -huh. But I really couldn't do anything for him. I still blame myself. And I never started a new life. So, instead, I take good care of my little ones. I cook good food for them and clean up after them. And when they leave dirt on the kitchen floor, I take my work seriously and I keep things tidy here. You try asking her for the list of the boarding house tenants between two anecdotes about her job as a nurse during the war. On the second floor, I have Gerald. He was quite a personality, that one. He reminds me of my husband in his youth. You'll find a Rose's room on the same floor. She is very nice. You won't be able to talk to her. She's on vacation with her parents, as far as I know. On the third floor, Emily occupies the room at the end of the hall. And on your left, you'll find that of Daryl. Not much of a talker, that one. Always in his books. Quite the opposite of Emily. Who's real devil? but always willing to give me a hand. She's a beautiful person. You'll find Albert's room on the top floor. Anyone will tell you that he's the most brilliant one of the bunch. His work is the only thing that matters to him, and that's only become more true in the past few months. Besides, it's quite simple. He works so much that I haven't seen him at all lately. If you want to talk to him, you should go and knock on his door. Before he's leaving, <laughs> Mrs. Starling hands you over a large bunch of keys and adds, I wrote the name of each student on the keys. It's better that way. I've had memory problems for some years now. For continuing investigations, you take a quick tour of the ground floor. The living room is plain, only adorned with a carpet and red tones, and on the mantel, a photograph of a young couple, a soldier and a nurse. Mrs. Charlene's room is most ordinary. The garden is tiny and well-maintained. The kitchen is full of food and utensils. A chopper placed next to two beautiful chickens draws the eyes to yep. the table. Further away, you know it's a large combination lock. Okay. To the that probably leads to the pantry. Okay, so that's the same info we had. It is. So I was <laughs> investigating it earlier. Didn't actually get us... <laughs> We would have been better interviewing her. We would have got all of the uh, all of the information. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a bit of Monty Python voice, that. Sorry. Just a little. Right, okay. So we've got a map now. We've got all of the different rooms, and we have many, many more places that we can now go to. We have Gerald, 1921. Uh, Rose, 1922. Uh, Daryl, 1932, Emily, 1931, and Albert, 1941, on the fourth floor. Well, we've got to go there, haven't we? Yeah, we've got, we've got to go. We've got to go to Albert's room. Now, I assume that we're not going to be able to interview him because <laughs> he's not there. He's not going to be there. He's been missing. So, I think investigate. Investigate his room, yeah, that makes okay, sense. Okay, so we're going to investigate Albert's room. So we're investigating 1941. Oh, I just noticed that the, the little bars with the numbers in them either black or white. Black bars for investigation. White's for... Ah, uh, right, okay, that's handy. 1941. Right, it's a short one. I'll read the short one, you read the long ones, even though you've got a cold. <laughs> yeah, my voice is going a bit. Albert's room leaves you relatively perplexed at first. The corners of the room are illogical, as if they were partitions, but after knocking on all the walls, nothing sounds particularly hollow. You find a large number of books borrowed from the Arkham Library, brackets 1340. Most of them are about astronomy, ancestral rites, and esotericism. 
But the strangest thing you notice is the traces of dirt on the floor, and these scratching noises coming from the walls. Oh. Well, that's that's a bit of a <laughs> cliffhanger to end it on, isn't it? Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, dot, so... dot, dot. <clears throat> the corners okay. of the room logical as if they were petitioned, so it's sort of like a fake room. We've got the floor plan. We've got the floor plan. But we can't go to any of the other rooms on here because that's just the alley. That's just the corridor, isn't it? There's a corridor, there's a bathroom. It's the only room on the fourth floor. There's Are something we weird that... going on with this room, isn't there? The Arkham Library is a new place to go. Yeah. It should be in bold, really, shouldn't it? Every, every time we've ever seen it, it's been in bold so far, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Scratching noises coming from the walls, dot, dot, dot. Dirt on the floor. Traces of dirt on the floor. Okay, so there wasn't dirt on the floor in her room unless under her kitchen mm -hmm. cupboards. So it was obviously she has dirt in there, but she's cleaned it up. But hasn't cleaned up his dirt very well. And she, well, yeah, because she was all about, oh, I go around cleaning... And dirt under the air, under the nails of the corpse in the morgue. Yeah. Scratching people, scratch, scratch. So what do we think? Go? Do we? Are we bothered about any of these other people? Well, who's below him? Um, Daryl. What do we know about Daryl? Not much of a talker. That one, always in his books. And the library books. Suspicious. Well, he's got a load of books from the library. Yeah, I reckon so. And directly below him? Directly he below. Interview or investigate? Ooh, interview. <laughs> Possibly. So we just investigated uh, we his We investigated room. Albert's room. <laughs> Which yeah, was so the, James uh, is saying, traces of dirt just like the corpse in the morgue. So the corpse in the, mo in the morgue was a... Uh, a like a construction worker or something, mm -hmm. who got dirt under his fingernails. Killed and by this, a girder. Killed by a girder, that's it. And this <coughs> is just... Yeah. <laughs> Strangest thing is traces of dirt on the floor. Hmm. Okay, so, Daryl's room. Interview or investigate. Tell me that she hasn't gone and cleaned there. She likes cleaning up after all of us people who are staying there, doesn't she? She said exactly. She hasn't gone into his room and cleaned it, and no. she hasn't. If she hasn't done that, she hasn't gone in there for three weeks. He's been missing for three weeks. She hasn't it is noticed. a little. Is it? It is a little weird, isn't it? Hmm. Where's page two? Hmm. Right. Okay. That was our seventh. So we've only got three oh, left. Gosh. Investigate. Investigate Daryl's room. Is that what we're doing? Well, that's what people have said. Unless we investigate, as Monica <laughs> suggests. <laughs> Is that a new thing? Yeah. Investigate. Vicky says investigate as well. Okay, we'll investigate Daryl's room. Do you want me to read this? Yeah. If your voice is... Probably a short one again. Giving yeah. way. Yeah. So what, what number is that one? Daryl is 1932. 1932. It's, it's a very short one. <laughs> Apart from some curious wax-soaked cotton balls on the nightstand and a recently added interior lock on the door, you notice nothing special in this room that you visit while its tenant is away. Wax there we go. Cotton balls on the nightstand. Cotton ball, wax-soaked cotton balls on the nightstand. Does anybody in the chat know what That's cotton be... balls in the nightstand means? Paul Snugs in the chat says he's Albert in the walls trying to get out. Could be. Maybe. Are they uh, earplugs? Wax soaked cotton balls. Wax been soaked cotton balls. Could be, Stop because of all noise. the noises coming from upstairs, all of the the chan chanting rituals. Well, okay, there are two left. Seriously? Wow. Two left. <laughs> what have we learned? Not a lot. Are we going to go to the university? <clears throat> Or with, hmm. We've unlocked these other rooms. Oh, no, let's go to the library, shall we? The library, that's what I meant. Yeah. Where was the library? 1340. 1340. So what are we going to do? <clears throat> interview or investigate? Um, I think interview. Interview the library. Interview the library. So 1340. Okay. You are received by Amy Boisnard, the head of the library, an old maid with a very strict dress. 
Albert Copper. Yes, absolutely. I see him very well who he is. He is a model student from a modest family. In recent months, he seemed quite tired, with large dark circles around his eyes and hands, shaking slightly. In September, he was mostly borrowing books on mathematics and physics, as well as some science magazines. His requests have turned to more original works lately, astronomy, then ancestral rites, and finally esotericism. A month or so ago, he made a very insistent request for books kept in a secure part of the library. Unfortunately, Professor Armitage, who runs that department, is currently in Dunwich and could not follow up on that request. That was three weeks ago. I haven't seen Albert since. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's delving into dark magic, isn't he? And he's... Uh, Professor Armitage in Dunwich. Yay. Yes. We've got one more place to go to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, four, Albert yeah, for him being on the fourth month. floor could be used as in a university. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're oh, looking at the looking at the stars. And there's yeah, so many, button. so many other rooms we could go to here, but I'm not sure there's any relevance because we've already been to Charlene's room when we when we sneaked in earlier. Yeah, but we didn't go to any of the other people's rooms. No, but I'm... I'm oh, well, we went to one. Daryl's. It's even worth it. What do we know about them? So Daryl is a, not much of a talker, always in his books. Yeah. Quite the opposite of Emily, who's a real devil, but always willing to give me a hand. She's a beautiful person. We find Albert's room on the top floor. He's the most brilliant of the bunch. Oh, and Rose's room. She's very nice. You won't be able to talk to her. She's on the holiday. And Gerald, he has quite a personality. Imagine yeah, now, I'll... when we spoke to the people at the police station, where was the police station? Um, Central Police Station was 1400 yeah because they said was it the police station uh, yeah one yeah. of the Raxons one Gerald Raxons. we called him he's in on a patrol car he was drunk his personality he's a bit of a personality that one and Emily Sundia a rebel now Emily's not on oh no is Emily the one who's on holiday so he's the real yeah. devil, but willing to give me a hand, a beautiful person. Okay, yeah. I I'm not sure there's any benefit to going to any to see anybody else, but I'm not quite sure. Which was Daryl's room? So Daryl's room was 1932. We interviewed him. No, because he's or did not. We investigate him. No, we investigated. <laughs> And we, he's got these wax-soaked cotton balls that we think oh, is... Oh, maybe we should interview him then, shall we? Well, this is our last one. It is. Unless we just break the rules and carry on going. <laughs> we can't do that. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any... So, where have we just been? The library. What yep. was the library again? 1340. 1340. What did we do? We interviewed the library, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We spoke so to Amy Boisnard. Amy Boisnard. Who told Is us it... the books that he's got, which we knew about. Which we knew about. That's true. And he was trying to get someone to secure part of the library, but he's not allowed. Okay. Matt is saying we should interview Daryl because he heard something. He took out his earplugs. I mean... Yeah, if we've only got one more place that we can go to, I, I'm I'm happy to make an assumption that Daryl heard strange things going on in the room above, and therefore, in order for him to be able to sleep at night, he got the he got the waxed so yeah, cotton balls as earplugs, and and that's it. So I think if we did interview Daryl, we'd just get there were strange noises coming from upstairs, and I've. I've I've had to use well, earplugs. In which case, therefore, do we therefore have our choice of place to go to, and it's going to be his apartment? I, I'm thinking that's that's it, and I'm thinking the scratching at the walls is because he's done something. There's something strange with the room. The way that it was written was the fact mm -hmm. that it was like the room, the angles in the room don't quite fit right. He's done something weird. He's done some kind of ritual, and he's ended up trapping himself somewhere in the room. If anyone used to watch Twin Peaks, there's a lady who trapped herself in the wooden furniture. Mm. So it's a bit like that. So if we've got one more place to go to, James is saying we should interview Haggis, who's fallen over. There you go. <laughs> He's asleep. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should go interview Daryl. 
Okay, let's interview Daryl. So, where was Daryl? 19... 1930... Was it 1932? I don't know which one is 1932, it? and we are interviewing yeah. Daryl. Right. Do you really think that with all of the work I have on my plate, I have time to listen to your crap? Blah, 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 questioning. I don't know what happened to Albert, but for the last three weeks, I have been able to... I've finally been able to get some sleep. Frankly, I couldn't understand any of his all-night screaming and idiotic chanting. Oh, I stand corrected. The only words I could make out and understand were rat and witch, if that gives you any indication as to how delirious this guy was. This is how Daryl greets you as soon as you say the first words, and he continues, still just as excited. At first he was an okay guy, but at, by the end he was frantic, and Mrs Charlene, who is deaf as a doorpost, didn't hear anything. The shells in 18. What do I care about her great war and trenches? Speaking of trenches, I must mention how badly Albert smelled. He reeked of freshly dug dirt and rotting carcass. I'm glad he's gone. You cut your conversation with this foul-mouthed student short. Right, that is it. We have been to the ten places we're allowed to go to. We now have to make a decision. Mm. So, oh. this dirt. The dirt under the fingernails of the guy hit by the girder. Yeah. Is that Daryl? Uh, is that... No, it's is not him, is it? No. The dirt under the fingernails means that somebody's maybe been buried alive and is trying to scratch their way out or something. They've been, they've been buried, they're trying to get out. They're being hit by a girder, I'm not sure. What about the people investigating? What about the... Um, do we think that the red-haired private eye is just been hired by Professor Bradshaw as an alternative way to find Albert? And that there's nothing okay. suspicious yeah. about it. Well, okay. we don't know, do we? We don't know about that yet. Possibly. Yeah. What about the... Um, what about the two military guys that are also looking for Albert? What do we think they're about? Unless they've heard of something. Or, or someone's digging into something they shouldn't be, I guess. Mm -hmm. Marty's saying that they were digging up corpses trying to make zombies. Okay. He's doing if, what, he's, he's chanting and he's shouting and screaming apparently in the night. Rats and witch. <clears throat> he's been missing for three weeks. Yeah, rat and witch. So we're not quite sure. There's plenty of places that we could go to that we haven't been to. And yeah, I mean, some people in the chat have said you you can go to more than ten. We're not going to go to more than ten because that's the rules of the game. But I guess if you wanted to do that, then it's your game. You could if you wanted to. Um, but we've got to pick a location to go to. We do. Let's just say what he says. We need to intervene somewhere. And I think it's probably his room. When you exhaust the allowed number of leads, choose one and only one location and read the corresponding entry yeah. in the intervention section. If there is no entry, you fail. So his room was what, 13, no, 1941? It's about the only thing I can think of. There's no more intervention that I can think of to be done anywhere else other than his room. No, I don't think so. Okay, let's go for that the then. Walls. So I will read this. This is the back page of the book, and I will turn to 1941, which is in here, and it's the shortest oh, one. one. Then. <laughs> so we didn't fail. Armed with your tools, shovels, pickaxes, and elbow grease, you are determined to find out what this curious room is hiding. But after several hours of digging behind every wall and smashing the few pieces of furniture there, you have to face the facts. Oh. Albert's not here. You have failed. And what's more, the almost imperceptible scratching noises are still all around you. Okay, so we did fail. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm sure wow. everybody wants to know what the actual answers are. And we, we aren't we aren't going to play it again, are we? Not the demo case. Okay, so switch off now if you want to play the demo case yourself. But what we're now going to do is we're actually now going to look at the actual answers so that we have a solution, okay? So yeah, switch switch off now if you want to play it yourself. But we are now no. going to reveal... Are we going to, are we going to read the answers or are we going to carry on with more, more things? Okay, we can do that. Carry on with some more okay. guesses and try and work we'll do it that. Out. We'll do that. So rather than going straight to the answers, 
which are here, we're going we're gonna to go to a few more places and see if we can make any more sense out of it. Okay, now where, we talk where to do you the think other, we should go? Other residents of the building? I think investigate the li library. I'm not sure why. So what, have, what did we do at the university? Did we investigate we the university? We investigated we and we interviewed. So because investigating is where we found that Bradshaw was giving the envelope over. Yeah. The boarding the house, we done. again, we investigated and we interviewed. Yep. So a boarding house is done. 1900 is done. Central police station, we interviewed. We didn't investigate because I don't know why we'd investigate. The morgue, we interviewed. We didn't investigate because I don't know why we'd investigate. But we could do those two. We could. I think... Um, yeah, I think investigate the li oh, then again, the library didn't seem at all. He's been borrowing all of the books. I mean, she said he's got large dark circles around his eyes and his hands have been shaking slightly because he's been doing all sorts of spells. Gregory says in the chat, as the author, I'll give you 10 more clues. OK, 10 more clues. Thank you. Did That's we nice investigate fact. the professor? Um, well, we, we yes, yes. Well, the because he was yes. he was handing the envelope of whatever's to the private eye. Let's get in the morgue might give us a body with other dirt situations, maybe. Okay. Right. So we're investigating the morgue, uh, which is 1200. Yeah, black, uh, black it's not in there. Oh, no, not in there. Okay. Oh, that's so you okay. can't investigate the morgue. Right. Next. <laughs> What's that sound? Uh, I'm going to investigate the library, the... just because. Okay. I, I, I mean, yeah, sure. There's there's rooms to other people living in the house, but I just don't think, unless I'm missing something. I don't see any connection between these people. All live there, I guess. They're all students as well. Yeah. No, I'm going to investigate the library. So let's get in the library. What was that thirteen forty? 1340. Right, okay. 1340. Armed with a search warrant, you get your hands on all the books Albert had borrowed and returned to the library. After spending a good hour reading, you realise that he made sure to annotate specific works, angle calculations, theories on the effects of stars on specific places in Arkham. No more than esoteric delusions which provide no clue to his whereabouts. Oh. Okay. Okay. I think let's go to some other rooms in the people's house. Okay. Yeah, because we don't have much else. Where do you want to go? Let's go Rose's room. Why not? Okay. Interview or investigate? Investigate. Okay. So Rose's room. She's very nice. You won't be able to talk to her. She's on vac vacation with the yeah, parents. Yeah, there you go. She's not there, so she won't be able okay. to investigate. But we can... So we're going to investigate 1922. Do you want to read this one? Yep. Rose's room is neatly kept. Nothing seems unusual. However, after a short search, you find many letters she received from her parents, which give a glimpse of quiet, everyday life in the small town of Ipswich, 2000. Which is another place to go. Okay. You also learn that Rose must be there at this very moment. The crumpled piece of paper you take from the waste paper basket turns out to be the breakup letter Albert wrote her last week. <sighs> Dun, dun, dun. Uh, finally, Rose's jewelry box is complete, except for a case that could hold, for example, a large pendant. Right, okay, so the plot thickens. Rose and Albert were romantically involved. Mm -hmm. Rose has gone off to her parents in the town of Ipswich, and Albert broke up with her last week. So Albert's been missing for three weeks. But only last week he broke up with her. Yeah. And Rose's jewellery box is complete except for a case that could hold a large pendant. Ooh, a large pendant, that sounds. And an elder sign pendant, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we've got 2,000 as a place to go to, to track her down, I guess. Okay, well, we, we, we've got to go there. We've got to follow it because we've nothing else to do. <laughs> interview or investigate 2,000? I think interview 2,000. Interview 2,000. Yeah, interview 2,000. So we're going to drive to the town of Ipswich. And yeah. we're going to have a chat. Here we go. Ipswich is less than an hour away from Arkham. 
uh, but you appreciate the journey as an opportunity to escape the dull atmosphere of your own neighbourhood. Uh, the dull house belonging to Rose's parents is surrounded by a garden perfectly delineated. After exchanging the usual courtesies and sipping an excellent coffee the hostess served you, the Millers tell you that they are all that they also are looking for someone, their daughter. Mm. They have not seen her for a week. Oh, she dear. was supposed to pay them a visit, but she never made it to Ipswich. <laughs> the father even made the trip to Arkham to no avail. The mother informs you that they hired a private detective two days ago, a tall redhead man with a broken nose, but they have heard uh, but they have heard any I think that's a typo. Heard. Yeah, they have heard, heard, they haven't heard any news from him yet. So yeah, there's another slight typo there. When Bert learns of Rose's disappearance, he grants you a few extra hours to find both students. You can visit three additional leads. Woohoo! Uh, uh, There we go. I'm I'm counting now, sorry. (laughs) Now, how many have we been to so far? Uh, So we've got on load 12. (laughs) 12 or 13, I think. Okay. Yeah, so there have been 11, 12, so this will be our 13th. So Rose said that she was going to visit her parents. So Rose yeah. must have told Mrs. Charlene that she was visiting visiting her parents. And she told her parents she was visiting, but she never actually arrived there. And it was Albert's breakup letter. He broke up with her? Yeah. Mm. And they've hired a private detective to look for their daughter. Hmm. There's definitely something suspicious going. So the professor was giving an envelope <laughs> to the red-headed pri- private detective. This red-headed private detective keeps turning up quite mm-hmm. a lot. He's turned Albert into a new. He's a witch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm checking the chat to see if anybody's got any other suggestions, and I don't think they have. Yeah, I thought rat inside the walls being the scratching. Maybe, Maybe she is a witch and turned him into a rat. You think Rose is Rose is a witch? Well, r- witch and rat were the two words that you they heard. They were. Yeah, okay. And Scratching she... with dirt under your fingernails. Yeah. Maybe turned back from a rat into a... Mm. Mm. Maybe. I mean, I think we got lucky there with investigating Rose's room, and it turns out that she was... Well, should we go to the other one's rooms? (laughs) We've got Emily's and Gerald's. They're the other two we haven't been to yet. Yeah, I mean... So what did we do there? We we interviewed there. We don't want to investigate there, do we? Because I don't think there's any secret stuff to find there. No, she hasn't been there there there. anymore. Hmm. Okay. Mm. But yeah, I don't think we've got anything else to go to other than the other people in the other rooms. I feel that we've been to a lot of places now. We haven't. We're running out of places to go otherwise. Yeah. We can't go to the kitchen. Gerald's the guy who peed on the police car. Yeah, but he's just a guy. He's just a student with an attitude, isn't he? Who gets drunk a lot. So the description of the place on the second floor, I have Gerald. He has quite a personality to that one. He reminds me of my husband in his youth. I found Rose's room on the same floor. She's very nice. She won't be able to talk to her. She's on vacation with her parents, as far as I know. Third floor, Emily occupies the room at the end of the hall. You find that out of Daryl, not much of a talker, that one. Always in his books. Quite the opposite of Emily. She's a real devil. Always willing to give me a hand. Yeah, and Emily is the one who we know is a suffragette, and she's probably fighting for... She's probably a, a political activist type person. Mm-hmm. Um, where did we find that out? So what do we uh, what do we that know? When well, we, we know about Gerald, he's a bit station. of a drunk. When he's sober, uh, he's a nice guy. Police station. Emily Sundia, a rebel into politics, a suffragette. Hmm. I don't know where else to go. <laughs> Who doesn't urinate on police cars now and again? That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Thoughts. Gerald's room. Sure. In the yeah. absence of uh, <laughs> of anything else to do. Now, are we interviewing or investigating? Hmm. 
I mean, we've nothing to suspect, uh, nothing to suspect Gerald of. Nope. So we should possibly interview him. Okay. So we're interviewing. Nineteen twenty-one. Nineteen twenty-one. Gerald opens the door, his empty eyes and a breath more questionable in this time of prohibition. He does not like the police, and this is much, and, and this much is clear from the tone of his voice. Nevertheless, he answers your questions. I don't know much about Albert. I don't hang out much with him. He's deeply committed to his work, not like me. I try to enjoy life to the fullest, if you know what I mean. But then he remembers something. Ah, yes, his only leisure is to spend as much time as possible with Rose, Students in a boarding house and all that stuff. You know the drill, don't you? Unless you didn't pursue higher education. I saw them last here on this very landing a month or so ago. They were having a bit of an argument, I think. Okay, so that's, that's no help to us. <laughs> mm. Yeah, having an argument. <laughs> yeah, so that was a month ago. And then a week ago... Three weeks ago he went missing. And then a week ago... Yeah. He broke up with her. Hmm. I mean, do we suspect her at all? Or is it is it mainly him that's in on this? Because he's the one who's been getting into all of this. Well, you know. she's missing, isn't she? She's missing. And she is. what the other guy heard was rat and witch. <coughs> uh-huh, yeah. He heard. That's why we think possibly if, if she's the ultimate culprit, perhaps, and okay. he broke up with her... Because he found out that she's a witch, maybe. Now, what, what have we done? We've we've investigated her room, haven't we? Yeah. Mm. But there's no sign of her. She's not there. No, she's been missing a week. Compi is saying maybe he didn't break up with him, <clears> make, <throat> broke up with her, and, and she forged it. Mm, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. So we've been to a whole bunch of extra clues, but I'm still don't know not where sure where else we can go. Um, how many places have we been to now? 14 or 15. 14. Okay. George just says he thinks Charlene could be the missing link. What, Mrs. Charlene? She's Mrs. Charlene. The, she's... Old, the old lady who runs the place. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a locket missing from her room, that's true. There's a locket missing from Rose's room. Rose's room. So who's yeah, taken the locket? It. And 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 why? And is it for is it for some kind of ritual or was it just stolen by Gerald or something? Well, should we investigate Gerald's room while he's not? Let's there? investigate Gerald's room. While while we're here and going everywhere, let's do that. Which one was his room? His room was nine twenty one. Nineteen twenty one. Taking advantage of Gerald's absence, you use the keys entrusted to you by Mrs. Charlene to let yourself into his room. Apart from a creaky floor that reminds you of a ship's deck, an assortment of trash and dirty clothes, you find nothing of great interest. But, ah yes, you find in the drawer of his nightstand a beautifully made brooch that must have belonged to a woman. If you want to ask someone about this brooch or, or associate it with a particular location, add five to the relevant paragraph and read the corresponding entry. Right, okay. So we do want to ask somebody about this brooch. Is it a locket or brooch then? Is it well, brooch? I don't know. Because this is a yeah, brooch. Yeah, there is a, a difference locket. between a locket and a brooch. Brooch you pin on your lapel or whatever. Yeah. Locket is on a chain around your neck. It, it could be a translation thing. We we will see. Um, but who are we going to ask about the brooch? Or associate it with a particular location? Add five to the relevant power. So I think if we add five, if we go back to. Rose's, Rose's room, room in the box. and we add five to it. So Rose's room was nineteen twenty-two. Nineteen twenty-two. So that will be nineteen twenty-seven. Oh, and ten leads was going to be well off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rose's parents might know about it. That's a very good point, mm -hmm. Matt. Yeah, should we do that instead? So Ipswich plus five. David says the same. So we'll interview two thousand and five. Talk to the parents about it. Talk to the parents. Here we go. 2005. Rose's parents stiffen when they see the jewel. Her Ooh. father clenches his fists before turning away to hide his emotion. It is her mother who finally speaks up. Yes, it is Rose's brooch. We gave it to her before she left for the city to study. A reward for her efforts and good luck. Does it mean that you've... 
that she's... You catch the poor woman as she collapses. You keep repeating that you haven't found her daughter yet before she snaps back to reality. You leave filled with emotion and a renewed determination. You will find Rose, whatever the cost. <laughs> will we? Okay. Will we? Well, we hope so. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to assume that the locket and the brooch is, is the same thing. Um, it might be just a translation issue that it's called it a locket in one place or a pendant was it I think a pendant in one place and a brooch in another um oh yes one of those pendant locket brooches yes one of those so rose had this in her room gerald stole it and but and that and that's it is it just the fact that gerald saw the opportunity and stole we it take locket to uh, albert's room I mean, we could do. Might be that it's a magic locket. Yeah, Matt is suggesting we we question Gerald about it. True. Find out where yeah. he got it. Yep, yeah, we can do that. So Gerald was we're nineteen. Nineteen twenty-one. So nineteen twenty-one. So we're going to interview nineteen twenty-six, which is here. Gerald cast a tired eye at the brooch you have presented to him. Ah, this brooch. I found it in the kitchen last week, I believe, but I don't remember exactly when. Oh. Uh, if you found it in the kitchen, she's locked in the pantry. Say again? If he found it in the kitchen, she is locked in the pantry behind the padlock. Gerald has dirty clothes. Dirt, dirt, dirt all over again. Oh, enough room for a pendant. Ah, right. Okay, right. So it's not a translation issue. There was enough room for a pendant, which means there's also enough room for a, for a brooch. Okay. So this pantry, let's go back to the start. So maybe Charlene, maybe there is something fishy about it. A chopper placed next to two beautiful chickens draws your eyes to the table. Further away, you notice a large combination lock affixed to a door that probably leads to a pantry. Probably. Probably leads to a pantry. But we can't go specifically to the kitchen, can we? Kitchen is not a valid place to go to. It's just... Mrs. Charlene's boarding house. Yeah, unless we choose to go to Mrs. Charlene's boarding house on the back page. Right, okay. And we assume that that is... So let, let's try and put things together here. Yeah, a personal item is needed when casting a dark possession spell. So... Dickens a ritual sacrifice. Maybe Miss Charlene's the witch. <laughs> cleans up, she cleans everything up, hides it all away. Chopper with a bunch of chickens. <clears throat> Do we think? Is that what we're thinking now? That it's Mrs. Charlene? Probably not. Because <laughs> <laughs> everything's pointing to Albert. But he was a brilliant student, diligent. Yeah, Whatever. but you know what happens when you read some dodgy books. Yeah, but he was trying to he was trying to solve it, wasn't he, I guess? And he was asking about the 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 hidden books, because he wanted to try and sort it. Witch and rat. <laughs> mm. Okay, so are we thinking that we intervene at the boarding house? We can give it a go. Is that what we're thinking? Are we, are we going to have our Where second else, attempt? Where else are we going to go? Where else are we going to go? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah, I reckon he was trying to stop her as well. Okay, right. Let's go for it. Okay. We're going to intervene... At Mrs. Charlene's boarding house. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is more text here than there was before. That's good. A quick overview of the boarding house allows you to focus on one essential point, the pantry. Yeah. After breaking open the lock with a crowbar, you notice a flight of stairs leading to the basement. As you are about to descend the stairs, two men in black frock coats stop you, flashing badges for a federal bureau you didn't even know existed, the BOI. At the sight of their gear... Flashlights mm. attached to a 12 gauge shotgun, <laughs> trench daggers, heavy caliber handguns, and harnesses Ooh. strung over their suits, you take a step back. These guys are professionals. They undertake to descend into the bowels of the earth. After an hour and a series of detonations, the two men finally come back upstairs, dirty and injured. There's nothing more we can do for these kids. You did everything you could, but it was already too late. The taller of the two places a caring hand on your shoulder and continues. You did an outstanding job today. We always need resourceful and courageous guys like you at the Bureau. If you're interested, 
Come and see us tomorrow morning. They leave as quickly as they came. No one would know that they had been here if it weren't for the traces of dirt on the floor. The smell of rotting carcass emanating from the basement and mm. this business card from the Bureau of Investigation. You have completed your mission and you can now discover even more exciting and strange adventures in the Bureau of Investigation game. There we go. So that was a, a, a look of things on this page. There There's are, other things here as well. Yeah. But we two won't look at them. Two ways of losing. Right, okay. We will we will read them privately afterwards. Mm -hmm. But there you go. That That is an introduction to sort of how the game plays. It did feel very different from Sherlock Holmes yeah. Consulting Detective. It feels... Because it's got that fixed amount of leads. Because normally, yeah. what, whenever we play Sherlock Holmes, we do as many as we want. We go we? everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we might end up having to do the really same with this. Playing the game as much as you should, according to the rule book. Yeah. But we still get a decent enough score, so we yeah, yeah, we do, up. we do all right. Um, yeah. But yeah, we probably end up going. Ah, oh, well, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we succeeded with a. We we needed a few extra leads to do it. Um, and you know, if you do get the game, it it is your game. I think the main cases. Um, I think it's 15 or 20 leads that you can go to, but that mm -hmm. might not be enough. <laughs> I don't know. Based on no. based on how well we did today, that, that was quite tricky. The thing is, there's, um, the, um, there's the temptation to both investigate and interview every location you go to. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you do that, you, you can realize, still do oh, that. Got send info. Oh. Yeah. The house rule, it only, it only costs one to both do work. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. Yeah. We, we are all done. So... Thank you for everybody taking part in the channel live chat. Thank you for helping us and give us suggestions. Um, there isn't an actual solution, I don't believe, to this one. Uh, but as I say, well, one thing that we're going to do is we are going to read through the rest of the entries ourselves offline just to just to get an idea of um, of, of, of what was going on. Uh, and I think somebody said earlier on in the chat that it is based on um, one of H.P. Lovecraft's short stories. I think, but I'll, I'll have a look through the chat later on uh, there's a, there's at least one case in the box that you can't succeed if you use more leads than allowed oh right okay mm -hmm. interesting to know interesting to know so we can't we can't do we can't cheat on no, that it will say no we're not allowed ta -ta -ta -ta. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're dead maybe um, <laughs> but yeah thank you very much for watching the video leave me a comment uh, if you've been watching this and let me know if you find it useful I don't exactly know when the game is going to be out I think it's already out in French um, but the English version is being distributed around uh, around the world uh, at some point. I don't exactly know when, um, but yeah, soon, I think. Um, but thank you, Rick, for joining me tonight. No worries. And yeah, thank you for everybody for watching. Thank you very much to Space Cowboys for asking me to do this. And thank you to the designer of the game for being in the chat and keeping us company and helping us along the way. But for now, we'll disappear. Take care. Thank you very much for watching.